Cook's government. First hand I see. You can use any notes, anything. Go ahead, Cop. Like any entity. Oh, oh uh, the means by which a society organizes itself and allocates authority in order to accomplish collective goals and provide benefits as the society is. Wow. You know, I hope that I don't have to test you for that because I'm not going to be able. Go ahead and click it, Kelsey. Um, government, what I said was just processes and institutions by which people govern themselves. That might be a little bit easier than all of that, but you get the idea. Go ahead, touch the house, and if y'all will pick me a category. Anything that's yellow. Um, constitution for two. Constitution for two. Fractions. First hand I see, <laughs> I need examples of fractions that we've talked about in class so far. Y'all have it first. Well, what is the three-fifths part? Uh, we re we uh, had slaves represented. We represented three-fifths a person. For what purpose, by the way? Uh, for determining how many seats we're going to give them in our... Yeah, in the Congress. That's exactly right. Liam, don't be shy. Go out and be mixed with the people. Zoom in on Blair. I as am. He's trying. No, zoom in close to Blair. <laughs> B, if close? you'll jump in, I guess, with this group That's over so here. Funny. Okay, and, and I'm sure they'll bring you up to speed. Three-fifths. Five slaves equals three people, and it was five slaves equals three people for representation purposes for uh, getting seats in the Congress. Y'all have any other fractions that you want to give me? Go ahead. Congress can override a veto with, with two-thirds. Congress can override a veto with a two-thirds vote. Anything else? Uh, three-fourths. What's three-fourths? Three-fourths of the legislators need to, be able, uh, need to sign on for an amendment to the Constitution. A state legislator to ratify the amendment. I'm going to cut you some slack on this because nobody's complaining. Three quarters of the states need to, not the legislatures necessarily, but three quarters of the states. So you gave me a two thirds, a three fifths, and a three quarters. Anything else? First hand I see, we'll have it next. Fractions that we've discussed. Go ahead. The majority in the Senate is 51 out of 100. Don't put that on a test. Um, what is the actual, okay, so you gave me three quarters. What did you need in order to pass a law under the Articles of Confederation? Go ahead. What's that? Nine out of 13, you did. You actually needed nine out of 13. What did you need to, uh, to actually um, amend the Articles of Confederation? 13 out of 13, had to be unanimous. What did you need to ratify the Constitution? Nine out of 13, yeah it was. So nine thirteenths, two thirds overrode a veto and proposed an amendment. So there's like six or seven of these. Go ahead, click it if you would. And you'll notice up here, three fifths clause for slave, two thirds override a veto, two thirds propose an amendment. Nine thirteenths pass the law, Articles of Confederation, three quarters ratify constitutional amendment, and then 13 thirteenths amends the Articles of Confederation. Go ahead, touch the house. Y'all pick me a category, Rachel's group. Citizenship for two. Pictionary, I need somebody to come up and draw. Now when y'all come up, y'all have a minute to draw. <clears throat> this is citizenship for two. Oh, that makes it even better. Just need somebody to come up. You got the best job. You might miss this one. Okay, now you can't write any numbers or words. I'll give you one minute. We'll start it on the seven. That's what I need you to draw. Got it? One minute, go ahead. Uh, so are we guessing? Just their group. Yeah, just your group. That's not bad. <laughs> the wall. The wall. Wow, here we go. <laughs> the wall. One minute on the seven, so 30 seconds. And this is from the citizenship chapter. Oh, is it the article with the police officer? No. And don't Arizona. see the siren. Oh. That doesn't look like it. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. <laughs> 20 seconds. Oh, my. Straight railroad and railroad. You can write if they say one word, but they didn't say the other one, did they? No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Oh, Underground Railroad. Underground Railroad. What's the significance of Underground Railroad from the first chapter? Y'all have it. And first hand I see, we'll have it next. Y'all have it. Oh, you want to keep up? No. Okay. 
What do you got? Underground Railroad. Five. We what was about, the question? Well, we talked about Harriet Tubman. We did. What's the significance of Harriet Tubman? Well, she was going to be on the... Bill? Harriet Tubman was actually suggested to be put on the $20 bill to replace uh, Andrew, Jackson. Andrew Jackson. Yeah, she was. And, and and if you remember on this, Harriet Tubman, why? what's her connection with the Underground Railroad? Five. She found it. She, she like, found it? No, no, no. She, she, like, led she, led she found it. She led so many people. She did. She led an awful lot of people um, out of slavery by the guidance of the North Star, if you remember. Where was she from? Mississippi, no, she wasn't from Mississippi. Minus two. Where was she from? Any of the other groups? Maryland. Where was she from? Any of the other groups? Go ahead. Yeah, she was from Maryland. Yeah, Nathan, good job. And somebody blurts it out whether I'm supposed to. Yeah, okay, what else can you tell me about this? They wanted to put her on the 20. Can you tell me anything else? Say what? Yeah, Donald Trump actually wants to put her one two on the two dollar bill. So she's just I guess at this point the plan is to put her in next year. We don't know what's ultimately gonna end up happening. The two dollar bill, what's significant about the two? Say what? Come get closer to Sam. What's on the reverse? Is it is it about the constitution on the reverse? Uh yeah. How it was Five, four, it's not three, used a lot, so nobody's gonna see two, it. one. It's not the Constitution on the reverse. Minus two. What's on the reverse? Y'all are out. Y'all are out. Y'all have it. Y'all can get in on this. Go ahead. Signing of the Declaration of Independence is actually what's on the back there. Yeah. And if you remember when we talked about this, we talked about this in the context of, okay, um, maybe it's just old white guys, pale male and stale that's on the money. And we talked about this in the context of, wouldn't it be nice if there was more diversity? And then, if you'll recall, there were a number of you who were like, no, hell, I just want my money to spend. Do you remember that? That's what we were talking about. Make sure that you look back at Harry Tubman. Go ahead. Um, click it and touch the house, and y'all gave me the last correct answer, so pick me a category. You're in first, second place, barely. Uh, let's do articles for five points. Articles for five, here we go. List all you can, click it. You have it first, Anthony Ellenus, first hand I see, has it next. Go ahead. Uh, he posted some rap lyrics on Facebook about um, he did. He, do you remember what he said? Anthony Ellis, he had a screen name, I think it was Tone Dougie, and he started to post what he called rap lyrics on Facebook. And do you remember what the lyric was? Five, four, I mean, even approximate it for me. Three. Go ahead, Patrick. Something about uh, shooting up these kindergartners and stabbing an FBI. He did actually threaten. He did actually, one, two, three, four, five. He did actually threaten to go shoot up a kindergarten class. What did he say about his wife? Uh, I have the what do you have about the FBI agent? Uh, he said uh, something about that bitch getting so close, he's, he's going to turn into her ghost. You're actually really, really <laughs> close on this. If you go back and you look at Anthony Ellis, he, he said in there, little agent lady stood so close, took all the strength I had not to turn that bitch ghost, is what he said. Hey. You remember what he said about his wife? Five. I'm going to go back to John Oliver. Four, three, two. Go, John Oliver. Uh, something about, like, Yeah, that's actually really, really close. I'm not going to rest till your body is a mess, soaked in blood and dying. You remember what his charge was? I mean, he was he was sentenced. Do you remember how long he got in prison? Y'all have it, and then I'll, I'll take hands. Five, four, three. 44 months. It was 44 months. John Oliver looking at the articles on the computer. It was 44 months. Um, he went to the Supreme Court. Do you remember what his argument was why he shouldn't have been locked up? John Oliver, your group still has it. Tell me more. Four. He wasn't going to act on it. Three. His argument was, well, I'm going to come back to that. Not quite. Let's see. Who's got it? Kelsey. Yeah, Kelsey's just doing, yeah, thinking about Patriots, man. <laughs> Zoom in on Kelsey, please. Come up and get close. Who's got it next, Kelsey? Pick, Pick somebody. Go Tom Brady. Okay, yeah. Just wow. Okay, go ahead. Uh, he claimed it was a 
was therapeutic? He did. He actually claimed one, two, three, four, five that this was a therapeutic thing. He also said that this was a, 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 a an expression, kind of First Amendment, kind of a piece to it. The court did they uphold the conviction? Did they strike it down? They struck it down. They did. Why? Uh, they didn't want to open the doors to stopping free speech like this because there was no. Um, he couldn't act on the. This is where John Oliver's point would come in. One, two, three, four, five. In fact, they said, listen, there's no proof that he would actually act on these things. Um, go ahead, touch the house, pick me a category. Now y'all are in first place. And make sure everybody in the group answers something, because, you know, if you're quiet, can't give you bonus points if you don't at least get something wrong. Go ahead, Haruko. Chapter, oh, Chapter what? Two. For five points. Chapter two for five. Click it. Ladies night. Y'all have it first. You'll have it next. Y'all have it first, though. Uh, there is uh, the bar that uh, people are trying to say that it was. Um, what is ladies night? Five. It's four. Half price drinks for ladies. Half price drinks. Maybe it's half price. Maybe it's reduced price. Maybe it's no cover. But you get the general idea on this. And there was a controversy. What? Anybody in the group? Y'all have it. It was discrimination on the basis of sex. Yeah, they're basically saying this is discrimination on the basis of sex because the only difference between Haruko and, and, and Angelo, well, I'm not going to get into that on camera, but, but you get the idea. They're basically being treated differently, and the only difference is their gender. Um, what did the guy say in the article? What state was this, by the way, five? New York. Four. It was New York. Yeah, tell me more. Well, no, Jesus well, Christ is not part of this article. I, I heard that. They said that the men don't even mind it because it brings in more women. Some place. people actually did say that the men did not mind this. What did New York State say? Did they uphold Ladies' Night or did they strike it down? Uh, they upheld it, uh, Ladies' Night. They upheld it. And, and why did they up? Go ahead. There are other places that have a Guys' Night, so if you're interested in getting a discount, there are bars in New York. They said that there are other bars where you can have man's night. Now, they may not be the exact bar that you want to go to, but in fact, they're there, so it's not discrimination. But the same case came up in Minnesota a few years later, and what did they say in Minnesota? They struck it down on discrimination. Yeah, why? What was the state's role in this? Do you remember? Go ahead. They supply the liquor, so it's a, it is a state thing. State supplies the alcohol license, one, two, three, four, five. So if they're discriminating, this is state-sponsored discrimination, and they struck it down. And in both of these cases, the men were like, hey, you know, if this is discrimination, let's do it every night of the week, man, because there's going to be women in the clubs. Um, go ahead, touch the house, pick me a category. Man, y'all don't let them wipe y'all up like this. No, that's okay. Go ahead. Pick me one. Go ahead, McDelowit. Chapter three for four. Uh, two steps to a activate the interstate commerce clause. Y'all have it. Um, what are the two things that must happen? You have to ask for public use orders and oh, you have a service or a sale. A service or a sale. Okay, so, so put it into a good sentence for me. Number one. Yeah, ultimately what you're looking at on here, Rachel's group, one, two, three, four. If you're going to deal with interstate commerce, it must cross state lines and? And there has to be transaction Transaction, the interaction of good or service. So there must be the exchange of a good or service that crosses state lines. Click it, Kelsey. Kelsey, don't look too happy. Exchange of goods or services crossing state lines. Touch the house. Oh, come on, Liam. You got to walk around and get in these people's faces. Pick me a category. Chapter 3, 5. Chapter 3, 5. Chapter three for five. Okay, looks like we got a dictionary. <laughs> I don't think that was chapter 3 for 5, was it? It was. It wasn't? Okay. Who's going to draw? You want me to draw again? Yeah. <laughs> you did good. Okay. This is an easy one. Give you one minute on the one. Make sure that they, and, and if there's more than one word, make sure you, you say them both. Oh my. <laughs> French fries. 
Oh my god! Yeah, it is French fries. What's the significance of French fries from chapter three? So they come. Uh, a lot of potatoes are from Idaho. So we're having them here, like five guys. Here. One, so two, so three, four, commerce. five for the prize. One, two, three, four, five. Interstate commerce, and we had talked about this with Five Guys Burgers and Fries because the sign is from Idaho, where the potatoes are from, and you're engaged in interstate commerce when you buy the fries. As many as you can give me. First hand, I see has got it next. Other examples that we talked about with interstate commerce from yesterday's class. Go. Uh, like guns. Guns. What about guns? Uh, you can buy them in other states and bring them over to, to your state. Okay. Or they can be manufactured yeah, in different places and put together.